Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Um, I do want to apologize that this stream is an hour later than usual. Had quite a few errands to do. So yeah, we are an hour later. And no, it's not daylight savings time quite yet. That's probably in like another month here. But yeah, um, starting at 2.30 instead of, or 2.40 at this time, instead of the regular 1.30 p.m. PDT. So thanks guys for joining in. Welcome to Dark Action, Fatal End, Bacon and Tuna, Mozu, Lost and Confused, Note Makoti, Joda on Code, ATL 2203381, A1, who else is here? Nyoted, Bookmonger, KSJ. Thanks guys all for joining in and not Panos as well. As you guys can see from the stream title, today we are building the KBD fans Blade 60, which I unboxed, I think about a month ago at this point, but we are finally going to build it. So yeah. This is unlike any KBD fans box that I've ever had before. It's actually really well done. There it is, the yellow blade 60 right here. Pull it up for everyone to see. Um, for those of you who didn't catch my unboxing stream, my quick, what, 60 second take on it was that I felt that while it looked good in pictures, the blocky nature, the the ununiform curves, I, I guess um, edges right here, didn't really do it for me. It seemed it seemed heftier than what I thought it would be. So not sure I'm into the aesthetics at all, but hopefully I'll be into the sound and feel. Right? Like overall, it does feel better than a tofu. Like the anodization. Just how it feels in hand is better than the tofu, but to be honest, I don't have, I guess I don't have good expectations for it. I think it's just going to be another tray mount, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, KBD fans did send me some tactile switches to build it with. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'll go that route. Here, these are the tactile switches they sent. Like, I heavily considered using these because they're Gatorons. I like Gatorons. But at the same time, these feel very much like browns. So I'm not sure I want to go this route. Instead, just because it's a yellow board, I'd like to go with yellow switches. I wish there were more color. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been saying lately. But, you know, the more colors, the more QC. It's 380 and it does sound very good, but people are mad because it's got lots of foam like the jelly. Why are people mad about that? You know, it's it's obviously the the design language that all that Owl Labs is going through. You know, if you don't like it, then just don't buy from Owl Labs, right? Little Tunchi subscribed with Prime. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Little Tunchi is actually he is the customer who commissioned this board in front of me right here. This will be an in-stock key with 1K, yes. Similar to the to the jelly. No, that's how the jelly was was run as well. However, one thing about Owl Labs in stock is while they said in stock, it took quite a while before it actually shipped out and arrived at customers. So perhaps there are different variations of the word in stock. <laughs> there we go. Ah, such Swiss cheeseness. Here, let me grab a little dust mat here of sorts. Canon keys have some, oh yes, the Canon keys ones are really great too. If you guys like PBT, you can check those out. Here, I don't, let me see if I can grab you guys a link of one that I really like. Let's see. We had Tundra, I believe it was the Tundra set. I still haven't bought my set though, mainly because $90 does seem, well, oh, actually, hold on. What's the price for it? Oh, weird. I'm not able to. 
Oh, there we go. In stock keycaps. Winter Tundra for 70 bucks, actually. There we go. There it is. You can check that out right there. And the other one I was talking about was... Yolch. Yolch, I mean. Can you put it on screen? Yes, I will. Once I pull out both links. All right, so the first link there is actually Cannon Caps Winter Tundra. Check it out right there. Yeah. Check it out. Um, I got to see some Cannon Caps not too long ago. And the quality is actually pretty nice, especially for $70. So yeah, if you're looking for readily avail available PBT from a US vendor, um, highly consider this one. The other one I was talking about which someone was recommending was EPBT Yolch. I currently have it on my Thera 75. Really like its texture, really like how it looks. Yeah, if you guys are interested, check out Divinity. That's the second link over there. And kindly use discount code WIZARD and you can get 5% off your entire transaction. Here, I guess, let me put that in there. There we go. There we go. Not pound size. These look great, but I'm afraid shipping to Europe will be more expensive than the keycaps. Yeah, that's the thing. Once you find affordable keycaps, you know, depending on where you can find it, you know, then you have to start worrying about shipping prices and all that. Okay. Let's see, where's the rest of my switches here? Here we go. So one thing I have to be concerned about is because since these are the soldered switches, I have to make sure that I pick out switches that have relatively clean legs, otherwise I can destroy my hot swap socket. And my brother says, hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, thanks for asking. So yeah, let me just... Yep. That worked out. This guy... This guy looks like I have some solder on him. So can't use him. Yeah, there's this like... There's this misconception that you shouldn't use unsoldered switches on a hot swap socket and... That's not true. The reason why you may not want to do that is because if you don't desolder it completely there will be ex excess solder on the legs that's the kind of switch that you want to avoid but if you do a good job desoldering then it's it's not a problem at all do i think the f284 was a good cop um I think so. If you like X, if if you like um, TKLs and you like uh, you like that kind of design aesthetic, then yeah, sure. I'm personally not a TKL fan, so I I probably would not have bought it. Are these FFFF switches? Yes, they are. So basically, these are like lavenders, lavenders, but in a different color and uh, also in a different spring weight. How do you like yours? I previously had these in my Neo Keys, my Neo Keys G67 palette, and I enjoyed them there. So I wonder if I'll like them as well. Pretty nice, he says. Yeah, these are good switches. These are fairly thocky in my opinion. Now I'm gonna need my little tweezer here. Ooh. 
What board do you go back and forth to work with when you're in the office, you're thinking about Bauer Light, and then when that launches, or KVD67, when it restocks them? I keep a board at work and I keep a board here at home, but lately I've primarily just been worked from home and I work from the kitchen counter. So I actually use the MacBook Pro. I just type on that for most days. But what I had at work was an XD64 with Xilance on it. I think they were... It's 72, 78 G's Islands. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if I remember. Tim has subscribed. Thank you very much, Tim. Thanks for joining in and thanks for your support. Two switches short to complete. Oh, okay. Two switches short to complete the build. Yeah. Always, okay, rule of thumb is always buy more than you think you'll need. Cause you know, chances are you miscounted or you have switches that died. You don't want to bring anything too expensive to work and I might be lugging it back and forth daily. Yeah. Yeah, what I brought to work was basically, I, I've got two silent, no, I've got three silent boards. And I brought a tactile board to work. Because... No, I, I was a tactile user when I started this current job. And that's the board that's been left there. But somewhere in the middle, in the last four years or so, I I I transitioned to a linear user, but I never swapped out the board at work. Tactile gang are losing the game. <laughs> I don't know. Like Percy, I just prefer linear. Just because it's it's basic and it feels good to me. Like tactile can feel good to me too, but it's I don't know, it, it's just hard to describe why I like linear more rather than it's more comfortable. I do have to say that it's easier for me to be accurate if I use a tactile board. You like linears because they are better. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's better because it's all preference, really. It's all preference. Some, some people even like clicky switches. Those are the people that are wrong. <laughs> No, the funny thing is, uh, my wife and I kind of transitioned to a new to to a new job at roughly the same time. So while I was a tactile user, um, I gave her a linear board. So she's she she was a linear user all the way through. So she was actually surprised that I used a tactile board at work. Linears are for weak fingers. There we go. I'm not ashamed to have weak fingers. How are the kitties? The kitties are doing great. We just fed them before the stream. They're doing well. Though I think Sushi had a slight fever this weekend. She was super lethargic on, on Friday. I was a bit concerned. I like actually called the vet to see if I could schedule like an appointment, but she gradually just improved and she was eating and all that. So I was like, okay, I guess she's better now.
All right, all the switches are in. Perfect. Ha! Huh. No keys work. That does. That's not. That's not right. <laughs> that's weird because I'm actually typing, but then when I go here on test matrix, it's not. Nothing's triggering. That's so weird. Let's try that again. Key tester. Test matrix. What? Nothing's happening. That's so weird. Hello! <laughs> That's so weird. Uh, that's new. I've never experienced that before. Here, let me just uh, unplug and replug, right? Otherwise, I'll just have to use um, QMK Configurator's test mode. Okay, it's not detecting the board again. There we go. Detection in place. Key tester. Test matrix. Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, that's uh, that's annoying. That's really annoying. Here, let me just uh happens on one of your boards. Which board is that? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, so the PCB does have a JSON file, otherwise test matrix would not work at all. Like, like it would not show you the diagram at all. There we go. Let's um just do test keyboard matrix. All right. So far, every key has worked. There we go. Every key works. Perfect. You can put it put it in its case now. Must be something in QMK. I have no idea. No idea at this point, and not really looking forward to debugging it. But all my other work boards, the test matrix works just fine, so I'm kind of curious why it doesn't work here. We'd go. Look at that. Yeah, see? That's a great match, isn't it? The yellow matches so well. Mmm, okay. Let me put stuff away first. Let me grab some screws. So not testing the matrix is good enough. Hey, Spurt CF, yes. Yes, I think that could happen. Yeah. As long as you have the... Which is weird, because if the firmware works, if the same person who made the firmware made the JSON file, it should be the same, because we literally have automation that can take care of this for you, right? You don't even need to do this like the way I was doing it for like a year and a half. Like, so that's, it's really odd that that doesn't work. Very odd. Interesting. What's your thoughts on adding O-rings for case mounts? So far, I've actually really enjoyed it. And I assume you mean tray mounts. So far, so far it's worked out pretty well for me. 
Like, I like how it's made the tray mount feel. Like, I'm still not, like, completely sold on tray mounts, especially since I typed on tray mounts for a significant portion of time. But, you know, I'm willing to, to give tray mounts another look. Infinite Nacho resubscribed with Prime. Thank you so much. There we go. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, what do you call that? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take off the keycaps off of my Thera and put it on this, just cause I think the contrast would work better. But yeah, I do really like my Thera, like how it sounds now, but I think I was never really happy with my color choice here. So I don't know, maybe in the future, maybe in the future, I'll put something else on this. But right now the Yolch, I think will look really good with this yellow. Here, let me type on it a few more times before I take off the keycaps. <laughs> Yep, feels good. Sounds good too. And now off off with the keycaps. You're hoping that the Element G67 shows up in time next month? Yeah. I hope it does for you too. Okay, that's already looking really good, actually. That is... That color, like, even on screen, I'm looking at my screen right now here. Yeah, that's what, what you guys are seeing on screen is what I'm seeing here. And that, that's a very good match. Oh, I love that. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest of the, the rest of the keycaps on and I'm gonna love it even more. I just hope it sounds good, right? <laughs> a board can look good, but if it doesn't sound good or type good, then it just, it's just a display piece. All right, that is a damn good looking board, if you ask me. I love how the colors are. And I, I just wish that there was like, if this was just a regular tofu, I'd love it even more. But with this blade thing, it's like, I feel like it, it accentuates the bezels, which is good. But then once you start turning the board around and you look at all of these funky edges and stuff, it, it, it just looks weird to me. This looks completely weird. Let's see. Okay, I can see it flex a bit because of the O-rings. Um, yeah, here, let's do a quick typing test. Here. Goodbye, Thera75. It was fun while it lasted, but your keycaps had to go elsewhere. Simply for aesthetics. <laughs> uh, I guess I could get your guys' opinions. For a black board, a black 75% like this, what what keycaps or what colors should I be going for on something like this? Maybe you guys can help me out here. See, keep in mind some accents in it is that it's got a, a blue badge right there and this funky, funky weight on the back. So yeah, what's a, what's a good color keycap to go for here? Black and white, GMK, oh, GMK Cobalt is, oh yeah, that's a good one. Too bad I didn't get it when it was in stock. Striker, yeah, Striker's a good one too. Hmm, but I think the, I think that the Striker blue is a little too deep. I think I might want to go for something lighter to match the badge more. Um, Probably... 
You know what? That keycaps that I was talking about earlier, I think that would be a good match. Here, let me show you what I was talking about earlier. I was talking about Cannon Caps Winter Tundra. I think this is the right shade of blue. I think this would work well. GMK Pauls, um, I think GMK Pauls has too much. It, it, it's too over, overly saturated. But Tundra might work. What do you guys think? Bloomin' is a little too light. Oh. Yeah, Solarized Dark would absolutely work. Okay, but Solarized Dark is currently on my Volcano. But, hmm, 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 do I like the Thera more than my Volcano? That's something that I need to answer. Or something I need to be able to answer first before I proceed on what to do. There you go, this is what my room sounds like without Crisp filtering all of that. Was I able to get an F2? I wasn't looking to get an F2. Here we go, let's do this. Let's do this typing test. say it's not the nicest sounding board that I have um, it's what I would expect from a 60% <laughs> not or from a tray mounted 60% not too impressed by the sound at all to be honest with you guys um, lately KBD fans has a new board called the blade 65 which you would think is also a tray mount but no it's not it's actually a gasket mount variant of this but in 65, from what I've heard on typing sounds, that's actually sounding, sounds better than this. So to honestly, I was expecting it to sound closer to that, but this just sounds like a typical trauma. I feel like this sounds like a, like a tofu. Yeah. Here we go. This is, yeah, I guess everything is color matched and everything. So yeah, I built this about almost a year and a half at this point. So yeah, this is using aluminum plate as well. And I believe it's even, oh gosh, at the time, no, these are, uh, I think these are the novel key stabs or it's the, at one point, Novel Key sold purple stabs, and I can't remember, can't remember if those were Duroc or not. I think they're Duroc, but yeah, this is it. This is my Tofu 60, my quote-unquote reference board. So yeah, every single board I built needs to at least be as good as this or better. And since I built this a year and a half ago, my, my building ability actually has gotten better. So this is with Gateron yellows, Gateron milky top yellows. Feels pretty darn good. But I can tell already that because I didn't like put O-rings on this, even with Gateron yellows, this is a stiffer typing experience than the Blade 60. The Blade 60, I can actively feel that flex and it feels better. But in terms of sound, actually, they're very similar in sound, but I have a slight preference over, over this reference build. Oh, wait, I remember this one. This one has that screw loose inside. I can hear that screw. <laughs> I might have to rebuild it at like one point. Pretty sure Duroc doesn't sell clip-ins. It's not in their product. Category. Yeah, I don't think I use clip-ins here. I use dumb screw-ins. 
I don't think I've used clip-in since like 2016 or something. All right, here, let's do one more typing test here. And we can end the stream. Here. There we go. No, no, Kerbal, I just went back in time. <laughs> There we go. Let me just check the voltage levels, or actually just the current levels to be absolutely sure. Because it was fluctuating quite rapidly earlier, so there might be something wrong with my PCB. And that's going to be very noticeable if I plug it in without the RGBs on. So without the RGBs on, I'm expecting it to be 0 0.02. 0.02 amps. Okay, I'm not too far off. 0 0.03 amps, and it's holding steady. But as soon as I turn on the RGB, it starts fluctuating. There you go, 0 0.18 to 0 0.25. That's actually, that's a good value. What worries me is the rapid fluctuating. So I don't know if this is common on a lot of KBD fans PCBs, but it, it does concern me. What is this nifty device? This is a device that my wife gifted me, actually. Something she thought I would find cool. Basically, it, it measures voltage and it measures current. So as soon as I got it, I actually went through a lot of my boards to figure out, you know, like, oh, I'm just curious how much, um, how much current my, like, like how much power all of my boards use. And there was one board that I was having such difficulty with. As soon as I plugged it in, it not only the voltage, but the current fluctuated quite, quite rapidly. And I was like, oh, that's probably why. Yeah, this is cool. Can you use this to measure? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Here, let me grab my phone. I have a Galaxy 10 SE. Galaxy S10e, that's what it is. Uh, I'm just basically just gonna plug it in. And as you can see, um, five volts, holding steady at 0 0.47 amps. Uh, word, of, word of caution though, this is, this is not gonna be terribly accurate. You're probably gonna be off by, by a bit, but it is pretty cool. It, it is pretty cool, especially if you have the OLED version on it. Yeah, pretty cool. It's been, in the two weeks that I've had it, it's uh, showed me some pretty interesting things <laughs> about some boards, yeah. Today I built a Blade 60 from KBD Fans. This is not a customer board, this is my board. Um, KBD Fans sent this to me just to try it out on stream. Um, yeah, if you guys want to know more information about it, definitely hit up the link that's actually provided using my my build command right here. Let's check it out. Yeah, check check it out if you guys are interested. This is a roughly $109 board. It is a tree mount, so do not get this confused with the Blade 65, which is a similarly designed board, but it is gasket mount. So this is cheaper, 109, a little bit more expensive than the Tofu. All right, guys, thanks for joining in. Hope you enjoyed this stream. My next stream will be this coming Tuesday. I'll be unboxing a monstrosity of a board called the Titan 60. So, so yeah, um, <laughs> tune in. <laughs> tune in on Tuesday if you wanna see a very industrial looking board that's also another 60%. So yeah, thanks guys for joining in and I will catch you
Actually, I'm thinking it's Sunday right now for some reason, but no, my next stream is actually tomorrow. Tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. for the group by news. So yeah, tune, tune in then if you guys are interested in the news. So yeah, thanks guys for tuning in, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye, everyone.